Welcome to Easy Elim Learning Simplified. Today we are going to study from one work and we are going to be looking at the topic water and hydrogen. So this is a continuation of the previous lesson. So you can go back and watch the lesson that we discussed on the burning of candle. So today we are going to look at the reaction of metals. And this topic is going to be in two parts. We are going to look at specific metals slowly in two sections. And this is going to help us to understand what happens when metals react with water. So today we are going to look at two metals specifically. We are going to look at the reaction of potassium with water and also the reaction of sodium with water. Later on, we are going to look at a few questions in regards to what we are going to discuss today. So we will start with the potassium. So this is the experiment setup that was made for potassium. So we placed a small piece of potassium. Later on, you will see why we are using a small piece. And it is going to be dropped into a trough. We know trough is a large container containing water we are not using or placing it in a test tube or a small beaker we are placing it in a trough because we are going to see the reason why and then after some time the resultant solution was tested with a litmus paper so we are going also to look at the changes that happens on the litmus paper and then uh, this is the setup so you can see the trough the large trough containing water and then the piece of potassium is drawn. The reaction happens very quickly and immediately. And let's look at the uh, observations that were seen in this reaction. So some of the observations that were seen is first of all, metal floats on the water surface. The reason why potassium floats on the water surface is, first of all, it's less dense than water. We also call it um, lighter than water. If it was heavier than water, then we would expect the metal to sink at the bottom. But in this case, our potassium floated on the surface of the water. The next uh, observation is a hissing sound is produced. This hissing sound is usually produced because of the production of hydrogen gas. There is hydrogen gas being produced in the process. This comes in form of a hissing sound. Next, after some time, the, the metal will melt. And it melts in an explosive manner, not in a quiet manner. So it melts into a silvery ball. This silvery ball then disappears. Because there's a reaction between the water and sodium is very exothermic. When we talk about exothermic reaction, we say that it's producing a lot of heat. So this is what causes it to melt because the melting point of potassium is very low. So this amount of heat that is being produced causes the uh, potassium to melt very quickly. So that is the reason. So the next observation is that it darts on the surface. The reason why it darts on the surface of the water is because it's being propelled by the hydrogen gas that is being produced. That propulsion is what causes it to dart on the surface of the water. And then you notice after some time, we are going. The metal is going to burst into a lilac flame. The reason why it bursts into a lilac flame. The first thing that happens is that hydrogen explodes into a flame. No hydrogen is very explosive in nature, especially if it combines with oxygen. So the moment it forms a flame, this is a flame now that reacts with small amount of potassium vapor to, pro to produce that flame, that lilac flame, because potassium burns in a lilac flame. The lilac flame comes from the flame that is produced by hydrogen that in turn uh, react or causes the potassium vapor to also form a flame. And the flame that we see in this reaction is the lilac flame. We also talked about the solution being tested uh, with a litmus paper. So the resultant solution 
turns a, a red litmus paper into blue. So when we are discussing the observation, we will say that the red litmus paper turned blue, while the blue litmus paper remained blue. So that's how you put down your observation when you're asked to state this observation. So the reason why it turns the red litmus paper to blue is because the product, which is called potassium hydroxide, is a base and it's actually a very strong base. So we will come to the strength of the bases and uh, in acids, bases and indicators, which you learned previously. We talked about it having hydroxide ions in solution is the one that causes it to be basic in nature. So let's look at equations. So the first equation is potassium reacts with water to form potassium hydroxide. So you can also be told to write it in a word equation. So if you are told to write in word equation, you just uh, convert. So potassium reacts with water to form potassium hydroxide. Solution. And hydrogen gas is produced. Then the next equation is, we said also, potassium burns the lilac flame. So the lilac flame comes from the reaction of potassium, which is in vapor with oxygen to form potassium oxide. So if you were to write that in a word equation, it would be potassium plus oxygen. It would form potassium oxide. So these two products, potassium hydroxide and the potassium oxide, both dissolve in water to form potassium hydroxide. So the potassium oxide reacts with water to form potassium hydroxide. And you can see in the first equation, we said potassium reacts with water to form potassium hydroxide. So you can see there's the reaction of potassium with water and there's the reaction of the potassium oxide with water. So we look at the effect of the resultant solution with the litmus paper. We said it will turn the red litmus paper to blue because, because the reaction forms potassium hydroxide, which is very basic. It's highly soluble in water to, and it dissolves to release hydroxide ions, which causes it to be basic uh, in nature. And then uh, next, we are going to look at now sodium as the other metal. So you notice there are some similarities in the, this reaction. So one thing we said when we were starting on potassium was we took a small piece of potassium. You see the potassium reacts explosively with water. So let's see if it's in the same case with sodium. So a small piece also of sodium was placed uh, in a dropped in a trough containing water. And then the resultant solution also was tested with litmus paper. So this is the setup. You can see the small piece of sodium, the trough, and also the lots of water. So let's look at some of the observations we saw for this reaction. So one of the observations is that the metal also floats on, on the surface of the water. This is because it is less dense than water, or we said the other word is lighter than water and it also produces a hissing sound and the hissing sound is produced because of the production of hydrogen gas. And the next observation is also you notice with uh, sodium, it also melts into a silvery ball. You notice some of these observations are similar when we reacted also with potassium. So it melts into a silvery ball and then disappears this is because the reaction between the water and sodium is very exothermic. We said exothermic means you're producing a lot of heat, and this heat is the one that melts the sodium. And the reason why it does so 
is because sodium has low melting point. And then there is another observation we said is as the dirt on the surface of the water as well. This is due to the propulsion of the hydrogen that is produced. And then the difference between reaction of potassium with water and sodium with water is also the flames. So you see that this, the potassium bursts into a lilac flame, but sodium it bursts into a yellow flame, as you can see from the image. This is because when hydrogen explodes into a flame, it also causes some of the sodium to burn. So when sodium burns, it burns with a yellow flame. And then uh, finally, the resultant solution was tested with a litmus paper. So it turns blue. What specifically turns blue? We said it's the red litmus paper that turned blue. And the blue litmus paper remained blue. So that is what happens to the litmus paper. It is important for you to note both sides when you're explaining. And the reason why it turns the red litmus paper to blue is because the product, which is sodium hydroxide, that is produced is usually base basic in nature. Next, you're going to look at the reaction equations. So first, sodium reacts with water to form sodium hydroxide in water. So you can be told also to use word equations uh, to write this equation. It's going, to be, it's going to be sodium plus water to form sodium hydroxide uh, and plus hydrogen gas. And next, the also sodium we said after the hydrogen bursts into a flame, sodium is uh, burnt also. It's burnt in air to form sodium oxide. This is what causes the yellow flame. This burning. So if you were to try that equation, it would be sodium plus oxygen gas uh, to form sodium oxide. And then we know that the sodium oxide that is produced from this reaction reacts with water to form sodium hydroxide. <clears throat> so you can also write that in the word equation, which will be sodium oxide uh, plus water to form sodium hydroxide. So at the end of the day, you notice that sodium hydroxide is formed when sodium reacts with water and when sodium oxide also reacts with water. And then finally, we look at the resultant solution that we talked about with the litmus paper. We say that it turns red litmus paper blue. And the reason why it does so is because it produces hydroxide ions in solution. This is the one that makes it to be basic in nature. But you can see the word that we are using that we used also with potassium is alkaline. Alkaline are bases that are soluble in water. That's what we refer to as alkaline. Next, we are going to look at some questions and regards to what we have discussed. So when water reacts with potassium metal, the hydrogen produced ignites explosively on the surface of the water. What causes the ignition? So the ignition is caused by the exothermic nature of the reaction. So when potassium reacts with water, it produces a lot of heat. This heat is the one that causes the ignition of the hydrogen. And then let's look at the second question. Write the equation to show how this ignition occurs. Remember, we are saying that when potassium melts, the hydrogen produced ignites explosively on the 
surface of the water. So we are looking at what happens when hydrogen explodes on the surface of the water, this ignition. We are not looking at the ignition of potassium. We are not for looking at the uh, lilac flame that is being formed, but we are looking at how hydrogen also forms a flame. So this hydrogen is going to react with oxygen to form water. That is the reaction that causes the hydrogen to ignite, but it is activated by the heat that is going to be produced when potassium metal reacts with water. So that brings us to the end. I hope you have been able to understand uh, when you react these metals in, in, in water. You can see how explosive they are. So we are also going to compare them with the next metals we are going to discuss in the next lessons. So see you in those lessons.